Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade polynomial system. Now we have x plus y plus z squared is equal to 15, x plus z plus y squared equals 15, and y plus z plus x squared equals 15. I know at this point some of you are guessing the answer, and you're probably right, but let's go ahead and solve this problem. I'm going to number the equations to make it a little easier. So equations number one, number two, and number three. And then let's go ahead and take one and two. Since they're both equal to 15, I'm going to set them equal to each other. So this means x plus y plus z squared equals x. Well, I didn't mean to write it that way, but it just came out. x plus z plus y squared. Forget about the 15 for now. This is good because x cancels out, leaving us with something nice and factorable. Let's put everything on the same side, squaring y squared, and square, uh, subtracting y squared, I, I meant, and then subtracting z. So it's going to look like this. Um, I should be writing y minus z, and that is equal to 0. This is nice because we can go ahead and write this as z plus y times z minus y from difference of two squares, and this one is negative 1 times z minus y. In other words, we can factor this by grouping. And it's equal to 0, so that's nice. And now we have a common factor as z minus y. Let's take it out. And then we get z plus y minus 1 equals 0. Now this has two conclusions. This means either z equals y or z plus y equals 1, right? Now which one? We're going to check both. But we only did it with equations 1 and 2. Let's go ahead and use 2 and 3 now and see what happens. So similarly, if you look at equation number 2, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, write it down for you. This is equal to 15 and equation number 3 is y plus z plus x squared and that's equal to 15 as well. So they're both equal to 15, so they're equal. And here, you can just totally forget about the 15. I just wrote it, uh, you know, there for you so you can remember the equations. But we can go ahead and cancel out some of these variables. For, for example, z cancels out. And we end up with something factorable again. Let's put uh, x squared here and bring over the y as well. And now we can factor this as y plus x, y minus x, n minus negative 1 times y minus x equals 0. And similarly, we can take out y minus x and get y plus x minus 1 equals 0 from here. This is also nice, just like the 1 and 2. This gives us either y equals x or y plus x equals 1. So I kind of got like two statements, z equals y or z plus y equals 1, or we got y equals x or y plus x equals 1. So we're going to kind of look at these different cases. So case number 1. Case number 1 is suppose z equals y and y equals x. So I'm kind of getting the first statements from each, um, you know, from each scenario, right? Okay. So, what is that supposed to mean? That means z is equal to y, but y is equal to x, so they're all equal. This means x equals y equals z. So I can replace all the variables with x then. Consider the first equation, for example, and it doesn't matter which one you use. We can just go ahead and replace everything with x, and then we get a quadratic equation, which is x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. And we can factor this easily, x minus 3 times x plus 5 equals 0. And now from here we get x equals 3 or x equals negative 5. Okay? But x equals y equals z in this case, if x is equal to 3, then y is equal to 3, and then z is equal to 3. And then from here, y is equal to negative 5, and then z is equal to negative 5. So we get two order triples from here, 3, 3, 3, and negative 5, negative 5, and negative 5. This is the case when they're all equal, and very easy to solve because they're all equal, right? Fairly easy. So the case 2 is going to be looking at it from a different angle. Now we're going to consider, yes, I'm okay with z being equal to y, so it's kind of like taking the first one from 1 and 2, like this. I'm going to take this, 
I want to take this, but I don't want to go with y equals x, but I want to go with this one now. So kind of like a crisscrossing. Uh, so I'm going to suppose z equals y and, this is an and by the way, y plus x equals 1. So let's see how that plays out. So this is kind of nice because now z is equal to y, so I can replace z with y, and I can also replace x with 1 minus y. So now everything can be written as uh, or in terms of y. And you know y, right? Hopefully. x plus y plus z squared is equal to 1. I mean 15. Now I can replace um, x with 1 minus y, y with itself, and z with y. So I get the following. It's not the same equation because y cancels out, leaving us with something even simpler, a quadratic, but super duper easy to solve, y squared equals 14. Now, why am I taking z equals y, not x equals z? It doesn't matter which variables you handle. At the end, it's just going to turn out to be the same thing. And I'll, I'll talk about the different permutations that can happen. So if y squared is equal to 14, this means y is either square root of 14, or I don't know why I'm writing z, y is equal to negative square root of 14. We don't have any conditions or requirements on y, z, x being positive. They can be any real number, so both solutions are fine. Now let's get back to the other cases, like, not the cases, but the conditions. In case 2, we said that z is equal to y. So this is equal to z, right? But what about x value? x is 1 minus y. So if y is equal to square root of 14, x is going to be 1 minus square root of 14. And if y is equal to negative square root of 14, x is going to be 1 plus square root of 14. Don't worry, I'm going to write them as ordered pairs or triples, correction. And then you're going to get to see the solution. So one of them is going to give us 1 minus root 14 comma root 14, comma root 14. This is one of the ordered triples. And then another scenario would be 1 plus root 14, comma negative root 14, comma negative root 14. And of course, the permutations of these will also work. Why? Because whatever x can be, z can be. So I can safely say that, hey, doesn't this work? Square root of 14, square root of 14, and 1 minus square root of 14. Yes, it does. Because x, y, z are all interchangeable, and pretty much you can, you know, take any permutations. But when I say any permutations, these two elements are the same. Therefore, when you switch them around, it's not going to make a difference. So you're kind of talking about a permutations with repetitions here, which is... Uh, 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial, which is basically 3. So this can be in three different places, x, y, z. The others are going to be square root of 14, or this can be in one of the three places, and the other two variables are going to be negative square root of 14. And the other cases are 3, 3, 3, and negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, where they are all equal to each other. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.